thus far we've been talking about the changes in heat for a specific substance, a one body problem. So either a reaction giving off or absorbing heat or a substance giving off or absorbing heat. And now we need to consider the fact that really heat transfers from one substance to another. So when a reaction gives off heat, that heat needs to go somewhere. And this idea starts from what's called the law of conservation of energy. And that says that the total energy between a system and its surroundings must remain constant. So that says that we can't really gain or lose heat. If something gives off heat, something else must absorb it. And if something's absorbing heat, something else must be giving off heat. So the way we draw this mathematically is we say that the heat of the system, remember that's whatever we're looking at, plus Q of surroundings or the heat of surroundings must equal to zero. And remember the surroundings we define as being the rest of the universe, but we can pare this down to being uh, something very specific. But the idea is whatever is happening to the system, the exact opposite is happening to the surroundings, such that overall we do not gain or lose heat. Really the way that we're going to look at this equation is that Q of system is equal to negative Q of surroundings. This tells me whatever happens to the system, the exact opposite is going to be happening to the surroundings. If the system's giving off heat, the surrounding is going to absorb heat and vice versa. And that's really what this negative sign means. This is where it gets a little tricky. This negative sign right here is one of the more problems in terms of making mistakes in exams is forgetting to use this negative sign. So you want to take a second, especially in these two body problems when I'm dealing with two different things involved in a change in heat to make sure that you include this negative sign in the calculations. So here's a classic example. I have a chunk of iron, 55 grams, and it is heated up to 425 degrees C, and I put it into 600 grams of water at 25 degrees C. We assume that no heat is transferred through the walls of the beaker, so really what we're doing is taking the surroundings and saying that our surroundings is going to be the water in the beaker, and what's going to happen is heat is going to transfer until we reach an equilibrium. So at one point, if we let it sit long enough, the water and the piece of iron are going to be at the same temperature. So you already know what the specific heat of water is. In order to do this calculation, you need the specific heat of iron. That's something that I can go and look up. In this case, the system is going to be the iron. That's the thing that we're looking at and the surroundings is going to be the water. So that's what's gonna be absorbing heat from the iron. And remember, I need to have this negative sign here. Because we're talking about a change in temperature, so the iron's gonna be changing temperature and the water is going to be changing temperature, we wanna use the MC delta T equation. So remember, this equation equates change in energy versus change in temperature. And that's what's gonna be going on here. And what I do is I set up an MC delta T equation for both species, the iron and the water, and I make sure to include the negative sign in there. If you don't include the negative sign, your answer is going to be way off. I then include the variables. So we had 55 grams of iron. We have the specific heat of iron that was given. Remember delta T is T final minus T initial. And the question is asking for us to find T final. So this is our variable. Our initial temperature of the iron was 425 degrees C. And then I do the same thing for water. We had 600 grams of water. This is the specific heat of water, so it's something that is given. Once again, we're trying to find the, the final temperature, but we know that the water had an initial temperature of 25 degrees C. So I set this up and solve for T final. And this is a little bit of an algebraic problem. I'm not gonna work through the whole thing. But when you get done, the final temperature should be 29 degrees C. And you can take a second and make sure that our T final should be somewhere in between the initial temperature of iron and the initial temperature of water. They're going to meet part way inside of there. So a T final of 29 degrees C is okay.